Hey guys, Joshua Peterson, Peterson Electric. This is my second video in a couple of months. We're almost into the first week of August for the new 2020 code for the next three years to be implemented. I am going to be talking about from an SEO guy. These are Skylight Motorized Systems. This stuff was made by Truth Hardware, Centuria 2, and made in the USA. Um, I used to have my opinion on certain international companies. I won't name their names that would actually manufacture stuff and ship it to the U.S. and have issues with their instructions. I'd have to say some of the USA stuff I read has same issues. Um, I've done a lot of window blind installs for motors, low voltage, uh, battery operated. I've maintained those as well, um, especially when they're high up in the ceiling at 22 foot high. I've got ladders and lifts to get up that high. This is a very short room. This pool was probably put in, my guess is, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 years ago. Um, I do have my questioning on inspections, really, just because of some of the stuff I've seen with the electrical and some of the sagging I saw on the cement. A little worried about if they even had rebar. But any which way, I'm not here as a builder. Uh, as an electrician, I came in here because they had hail damage for a roof, and they already had some skylights that didn't open, so they wanted us to wire it. So, if you look under the code book, there is nothing about motors for skylights. So here's some common sense. Article 680 for permanent pools will talk about what is the height above to have light fixtures above a pool of the body of water, not the base of the cement or inside the pool. So where the water hits, it's gonna be 12 foot above. So if I have a motor that is fairly sealed up on a chain, do you have to have GFI protection? For me, I can reach seven and a half foot so if I were to put a tape measure on that, that's probably right at nine and a half, ten 10 foot. But my switches are a little lower, as you can see. My switches would be probably right at about eight and a half foot. So here's the thing. There's not a lot of code about that, but what I did to be safe is I put compression fittings on all of it. I think that's a little extreme because I go to the Chilson Center in Loveland and when I work out there and swim and walk, uh, swim in the pool and look up, a lot of their high bay fixtures are 18 foot above the water and they're all in set screw couplings from just about 12 years ago on the remodel but for me because it was less i think people might splash and then you guys might say hey wait those boxes are not wet listed this is true but again i don't think there's going to be a ton of splashing on it and even if there was i did gfi protect the whole circuit this is one circuit to serve at 15 amps for all of this in a residential area um, but as you can see, I individually switched the switches right there. I could have put the switches up high either way around it. I had to junction, and they didn't want to deal with the LBs around the roof. Now, if you're wondering, could I have gotten an attic? This absolutely has one little vent, but the space up there is probably like this, and it's a flat membrane roof. So, no, I could have not. So, any of you guys want to ask me, you should have done it this way. No, I can't. This was the only way we could get it. I did say to them, get yourself 12 or 24 volt motors, and then I can wire you just a shielded speaker wire cable to wire and run it all the way between them, and you could paint the cable and I could staple it very nice. But they did want the 120 volt. I think the 120 volt is better because they're higher powered motors and I doubt they'll burn out as easy. So the couple things to keep in mind is that these daisy chained all together, but they paralleled inside of the box. And when I paralleled it, I can turn off each switch individually. Now, why did I do that? Because if you've ever wired Minka fans, they are the same way. If you go to link them and you have one on, they're all gonna relearn and you have to turn it off. So if you've ever had to go and disconnect and disconnect and disconnect, but yet the fans already hung, especially with the ceiling hugger, it's not gonna work to take the whole thing apart to disconnect. So you kind of have to have a switch somewhere. With Minka Air, I've got my own technique to disconnect as I do those, but keep in mind with these, all the instructions didn't say a lot. Um, so. What I did, and I'm glad I did this, I was able to disconnect the switch and do each motor one at a time because they wanted all the motors to turn on at once. And the trick of the trade with this model, with Century 2, was to be able to take out the batteries and put them back in and implement, turn the switch on, learn it, and then go through the steps that they tell you. But I had to do it for each individual one. But so, all of a sudden on the last one, I came across an issue. It's always the last screw, always the last blind, and always the last outlet that has an issue that you would think about. Keep that in mind, other electricians. But this one right here, it bound up the chain. So I went on the attic and I got up and I started looking around. And guess what I found? Kind of like I have with 
these screws hitting deck inside of or, um, cabinets. Guys that put long screws to hold up a cabinet, like what are you holding? You're not holding up a building, you're holding up a cabinet. And when you put long screws, you end up hitting a wire and you know because they blow out at the end of the screw. But the bottom line is right here, you can see that tip. He definitely hit the chain and it was binding and grinding on. So I took it out and started to finally free with my channel locks. And I don't normally like taking apart motors, but when I took the motor apart and took out about seven of these little gears, I took a picture and made sure I remembered how I put them back in. Then I was able to free up with the channel lock um, a little shaft. There's a C-sheet.